Hello everyone, and welcome back to No Holds Barred, the channel where sometimes we talk about makeup, sometimes we talk about relevant things, and sometimes we talk about electronics. Yeah. So if anybody's ever noticed, if you do, um, on my Instagram it does say that I'm an electronics engineer. It's true. I did go to college. I studied electrical engineering technology with a concentration in embedded systems and designs. So I'm like the nerds of the nerds. As you all know, or most of you know, I am no longer able to work full-time jobs. I am on permanent disability for many reasons. And if the phone rings, I do have to answer. Um, just a little quick thing. I do now have a, another diagnosis of an autoimmune disorder. And it affects my eyes and affects all sorts of things. And right now we're trying to coordinate all the specialist appointments. I do have one in three days where they're going to do a saliva gland biopsy. Hey, the future Sean here. So I just want to let you know that it is four days after the biopsy right now. It's still swollen. The bruising is coming through here. Um, mostly because there's stitches inside my mouth. I don't show it. I mean, some people are squeamish. My mom walked out of the room. <laughs> um, but I do have three stitches on the inside of my mouth and cut open and did what they had to do, so it's done. So all of that stuff, is it relevant? A little bit. I have not been working on electronics for a little while because I can't see very well, so these are new glasses. Thank baby Jesus. Um, I didn't realize that I was seeing double out of my right eye. I don't know for how long. Um, so I did go to the optometrist and she was able to correct the double vision, so it's a miracle almost for me but I mean I still am low vision so it's a little bit difficult to see small things but you know that's a magnifying glass there's four and a half bunch of those um what am I getting to today well as the title says I'm going to talk to you about your TVs I mean TVs are an investment I mean flat screen TVs these days can go into the thousands of dollars easily and I'm not necessarily talking to you know the younger crowd. I don't want to put a stereotype on there, but um, people who, you know, are my age or more, I'm 36, okay? Again, I don't want to stereotype anybody into some categories, but people who, you know, are my age, again, are more, we grew up with like the, those big CRT monitor TVs, the, the big back part, you know, like the, the tube TVs. That's analog technology. Um, that stuff can actually last for pretty much ever sometimes if you keep the upkeep of it very well. And this is why I want to talk about, you know, flat screen TVs. They're not designed the same way. I'm taking this from the point of view of like family members, people I know, people in the community that have, you know, mentioned and asked like, my TV is like seven years old, like why did it die, you know? Because we are used to the fact that those older TVs could last 20, 30 years. And the fact of the matter is, is that these new flat screen TVs are not designed that way. Um, the technology is different. And it's a totally different thing. Like I said, those old TVs, they're actually analog. This is digital and digital world is completely different. And I'm coming to you from someone who has studied this, who has worked in this field. I haven't always been on disability. I mean, I was able to work for a few years. And when I worked, I was a subcontractor through like a bigger company, but I was a subcontractor trained with NCR, which is National Cash Register, and Diebold, um, mostly on ATM machines and uh, point of sale equipment. So all like the cash register things you see, like the, the weight scale to see how much of bananas, and those self-scan registers. Oh, those are a pain in the butt to fix. But it got paid really well, because when it was on the weekends, triple extra time or something like that. I don't know. But I made a lot of money back then. I was able to work. So, I mean, I have worked in the field. And for those of you wondering, did I have makeup and rings on when I fixed ATMs? Heck yes, I did. <laughs> um, doesn't change the fact that I did my job very well. All right, enough about my history. And back to the point of what I'm trying to talk about. Um, the only reason I gave you a little backstory is to show that I do know what I'm talking when it comes to electronics. Because No Holds Word has a lot of things going for it. I talk about some, you know, 
human issues, sometimes half political issues, sometimes there's makeup in there, sometimes there's, you know, mental health tips. Yeah, I'm all over the place and that's okay. I'm not in here to make money, I'm here to just have fun and share the knowledge that I have and the fact that I have knowledge about TVs and I see so many people asking questions, I figured why not share? Here we go. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Alright. As I previously stated, these flat screen TVs, they're not built to last. Um, they're actually built with a time frame of viewing hours. So your typical flat screen TV is built and meant to last 100,000 viewing hours. And, you know, if you do the math of the typical time that people have a TV on, that is about five years. So you're going to be paying potentially thousands of dollars for a TV that is only built to last five years. Now, is it going to plunk out after five years? Maybe not. Maybe. Now, the rule of thumb with TVs, computers, that kind of electronics, is that if it's going to fail because of a component, so like a piece on the inside that's, you know, wonky to begin with, it's going to fail in the first three months that you have it. So if you've had something for a year or two and then something happens to it, I mean, it, it happens. But usually you're going to know if you're going to have difficulties with a particular electronic within the first few months of having it. Now that said, again, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen because there's various things that can happen. I'm going to explain a little bit between like the different types of TVs that are for sale now, what the differences are, in case you're curious, and give you a little few tips and tricks on how to make them last longer than the five years that they are designed to last long, or the 100,000 viewing hours are designed to last for. Does all this mean that the TV that you potentially paid thousands of dollars for is going to flunk out in five years? Maybe. Maybe not. It might be before. But it might be after. I do have a TV that I've had for almost nine years now and it's, you know, got a little issues, starting to have a little bit of issues, but it's doing pretty well. Just to make it a little bit clearer because girls tend to get a lot of on for being engineers. Um, I do have, look, this is one of my books from school. And um, this, this one was from one of my favorite classes. It's my Aubian book. And um, opiums are actually very important to what I'm going to be talking about today. So please stay tuned for the next part. I am not trying to make anybody feel like they don't know anything. Um, it's just the internet. It's easy to find yourself with bad information. And I believe, you know, that this is some of the correct information. One, again, I've studied this, I've worked in it, and I actually looked it up again to make sure that my information was correct. Some of those links are below. Let's get into TVs. LED versus LCD. What's the difference? They're just letters, right? A little bit of difference. It's really up to you. It, you go to the store, look at the models that are on display, but don't just judge with that. Um, I'm not going to say for sure, but sometimes there's rumors that stores will put um, a lower quality cable to the, the, the better TVs to sell stuff. I don't know. Uh, but my suggestion is you can go to the store, look at what you like, and then when you come home, do a quick Google search. Put the name of the TV in and look up for reviews. The best thing is to get customer reviews, people that have bought the same thing and see what they think of it. And then that's still up to you. I mean, sometimes you're limited by budget. I'm limited by budget. Um, I was able to get a very, very good, you know, smart TV over, you know, the Christmas period because it was a return, it was open box, kind of a thing like that. If you have any questions about open box um, returns, like send me the questions, write them in the bottom, I'll answer them. Usually there's no problem with that at all, but um, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about LED versus LCD. What's the difference? Well, again, like I said, not much. Both of them have the same screen. They all use an LCD screen. LCD means liquid crystal display. So the screen itself is the exact same thing. The only difference is the backlighting. So an LED TV has LEDs, so light emitting diodes, in the back as a backlighting. And they are usually 
around, like, around the frame to, to light from the outside in. Um, I do have a video somewhere back on my channel where I actually fix a TV. Someone gave me a TV for free and I fixed it and, and I tried to make a video of me fixing it. I'm still learning stuff. That TV still works, by the way. I gave it to one of my neighbors. They still have it. Good for them. And then there's a side of an LCD. So it obviously has a liquid crystal display and the backlighting of it is actually fluorescent tubes. Like I said before, the technology is a little bit different when it comes to the quality of the picture. That's up to your preference. Some people, you know, like different things. So like I said, it's, it's really up to you. The only difference again is, is what the guts of the inside um, have. Now this is where I'm going to talk about what the insides and what the differences are because that's where it makes a difference in someone who's experiencing troubles or difficulties in what they do meet. The first thing that I do want to say to everyone out there is watch your standby light. So every TV once it's plugged in it has a little standby light. It's usually red, sometimes it's blue. It's just a little light that's on. Um, your TV's not on but it's just, you know, standby to tell you that there's power coming into the TV and, you know, the module is ready to receive a message. If that light is blinking, it's very important because that blinking will usually tell you which part of the TV is having a problem. It's a code. It's built in. It's a code and that's great. All right, it's great for someone like me who knows what it means. But even people out there, if you don't know what it means, it's actually pretty easy to find out. Google search the name of your TV, blinking light, and you'll have Maybe not the first Google thing that'll come up because they'll probably try to sell you a new TV in the Google search, but lower, there will be links and Reddit threads are great to find out what that means. I personally uh, subscribe to CNET. I just love CNET as a very good resource. I will link them below. They now have an app on the phone so I get updates and all that whatnot. But there will be a link somewhere in the top five searches what your blinking lights mean and what do they mean that's what we're gonna get into so i do have a little bit of notes just to make sure that i don't accidentally say the wrong word with the wrong thing i do have adhd but i do know my stuff so we've already established the screen the picture it's pretty much the same the only difference is the backlight all right let's get into the guts and stuff of the tv so the insides of the tv they have different boards and most of them are called logic boards, and one of them is called a power board. Your power board is the most important one. It takes the incoming 120 volts, that is from, you know, your wall, at the 60 hertz, and it changes it into DC, which is direct current. And that's very important, because an LED TV works with nothing but direct current. An LED TV has something called driver boards. Now those driver boards, again, like I said, take the 120 volts AC current at the 60 hertz coming out of your wall, and they will convert it into a 5 volt DC current. It's not really a current, but for the lack of a better word, we'll use that one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I actually have some LEDs. Let's look at some. Now these are bigger LEDs, obviously, that are in your TV, but since they're bigger, they're easier to see. So let's look at them. Um, I have three here. Right. So I'm hoping you can see on the inside that you can see a little bit. That's actually very important. Um, and as well, we'll just use this yellow one here. If you can if I flip it around, and you can tell that the prongs aren't the same length. That is super important because LEDs are polarized. You can't put them in the wrong way. You need to have the anode, which is the positive lead, which is the longer one. That's why there's a longer one and a short one. Um, there's also a way to tell by looking on the inside which one is the anode and which one's the cathode. Again, anode's positive, cathode is negative. Um, but they've also kind of tried to make it foolproof by making the leads a little bit longer. Now, before I go any further, I will just talk another little thing that you're going to see if you ever open up your TV, and those are capacitors. Um, capacitors can be polarized and they can be non-polarized. So I have a few here that are non-polarized. So they're usually called ceramic. So if you look at the leads, they are the same length. Now, 
These kinds of capacitors are a novice, so someone who's just starting out into electronics or a first year student like I was at one point. These are your dreams because you cannot put them in backwards. They will work whichever way you want them to be. But in your TV, you most probably have some that look like this. Like these ones here. These are polarized and you cannot, if you put them in backwards, you're just going to make a big, big problem. Um, they have this same set up with the anode and cathode of the shorter leg and the longer leg. Now, that's a little bit important. I know some of you might be like, why are you showing this? Because capacitors are usually what will go. If a capacitor blows, if one doesn't work, the whole board, the whole logic board, the whole whatever board you're working on will not work. Um, and it's pretty easy to tell if they have blown up the pop. They will pop. They'll pop. They'll look like a, a blown battery. They're no longer flat like this. Okay, this is nice. and So if a capacitor goes, the top part will bubble up. It will look drastically different than all the other capacitors on your board. And when I said that it looks like a battery, well, capacitors are kind of like a battery. How a capacitor works in the short of things, because there are different ones that do different things, Energy gets stored in the capacitor, kind of like a battery, and then it gets slowly released, or the other way around, depending on what you want it to do. Uh, but capacitors are very important in the boards of the TVs, mostly in the LED TVs. And that's why they have driver boards, because the driver boards make sure that the LEDs get their steady amount of current so they can stay on, that they always get five volts because that's what they operate off of, 5 volts. Um, some other LEDs operate off 7 volts. That's a whole other story, but let's just play the 5 volt rule here. That driver board takes the amount of current that comes into your TV from the wall. Again, that's 120 volts AC at 60 hertz. And it makes sure that all the LEDs that do your backlighting always get the same amount of current and they always get the same voltage no matter what's going on in your TV. That's what I'm saying. There's the power board and sometimes that goes. Um, power board itself is different than the driver board. The power board again directs how much goes to your speakers, how much goes to the backlight, how much goes to processing the information and all that whatnot. And sometimes heat is a factor. Actually, heat is a huge factor. Um, this is a capacitor again. When you look up a capacitor, if you're going to look up the properties of a capacitor, they always have a temperature range that they can operate well between those temperatures. So extreme cold can make them pop or stop working and heat can as well. But heat also affects their operation a little bit. And since we're talking about five volts, a little bit of a difference makes a huge deal when it comes to the circuitry of having five volts. So in the short of things, that is what the driver board does. The driver board makes sure that the LEDs that are your backlight in your LED TV always have the same constant current and voltage so that they work at their best at operating so that they all have the same strength. Because, you know, if you'd have Five of them that were, you know, of a stronger strength than others, your backlight would be kind of weird. And that sometimes can happen, all right? If you happen to have an LCD TV and you have a corner that's always darker than the rest of it, then you have a problem with your driver board. Now, an LCD TV, they work with inverter boards. Now, this is where it comes into the stuff that I study. This this is my nerd point. This is where I flip off and, and, and go... Google Gaga over the stuff. An inverter board, it takes the 120 volts AC current at 60 hertz that comes in under your wall and it converts it to DC current, to direct current for every other thing that your TV needs to use. Except there's another part after it that converts it back to an AC current in order to run the fluorescence for your backlight. So there's a little bit more components to that board there's a lot more of these little capacitors on there because capacitors are a very big part of inversion. But, make this simple as we can, that's the difference. An LED has driver boards, it takes the power, turns it into DC, sends it to all the LEDs. An LCD TV takes in the AC 
and turns into DC for part of it and then it turns some of it back into AC in order to do your backlighting. Now, it's getting even more complicated if you ever looked at the specs, that little piece of paper underneath of a TV where it says 1080p and sometimes says 1080i. What's the difference in that? There's a huge difference in that. But as a consumer, not really. That's what I'm saying. So for nerds like me who know what I'm talking about, there's a huge difference between the P and the I. But as a consumer who just wants to enjoy their TV, I mean, I'm going to tell you the difference, but usually you just go with the P. P is usually easy. So that's how many times that the picture gets, like, you know, scanned, kind of like it gets shown on your TV. So if anybody's ever tried to take a video of, like, their TV to show a friend, you know, a, a funny joke or a little bits and pieces of a news article, and you watch the video again, your screen seems to kind of be flickering all the time, because it does. That's exactly, it's just frame rate, hertz, you know. Here I am, getting carried away, not realizing that some of these words are still foreign to a lot of people. So, hertz is a frequency. And a frequency is those pictures that you see that go like this, yeah, the up and down. The sequence, the wave, that's the hertz. So if you get a TV, with a higher hertz, and hertz is usually, you know, the H that hertz. That is the frequency at what it refreshes, at how many times it's going to show you the new picture. So the higher hertz you have for your TV display, I apologize, they're working outside. Um, the higher frequency that you have for your display, obviously the better picture you're gonna have because you're gonna get it changed faster and faster and all that kind of whatnot. But the P and the I have a difference in that. So P, again, means a progressive scan. That means just one after the other, after the other, after the other. The I means integrated. So it means that when the hertz is happening, the scan, every time that it shows you the picture, it's taking two things and kind of putting them together. And it's integrating them together. And that has its pros and cons. If you're getting a smaller TV and you really want to get HD, then the eye is going to help you. But if you have a, a bigger TV and I'm going to go like about 40 inches or more, then you're actually going to have less quality. Because the pictures are integrated, it doesn't capture movement and fast action sequences as well as just run after the other, run after the other, after the other, after the other. So if you buy a TV that says 1080p because you like watching sports and you like action movies and whatnot, you're going to have a great picture. You're going to have the full HD that you want when it comes to like movement. If you want to get something with the eye, which is integrating and you get like a bigger TV, those fast action scenes like sports scenes or fighting scenes or whatnot, they're going to look a little bit blurry because again, it's doing two things at once instead of just this is the picture, this is the picture, this is the picture. Um, you can think of it as when we look back on how Walt Disney created, you know, the first Mickey Mouse cartoons, when you flip the pages, you know, it's one picture, one picture, that's how they make cartoons. They take a picture and then they make them all go in a row. Um, that's kind of what your TV is, is doing to you, but if there's two of them mished together, it's not the best for action sequences things. But if you're the type of person that likes to watch documentaries, things that doesn't have big action scenes, you like to watch underwater stuff, you know, you that's what you're into, then go with an eye because then you are going to have a better picture because you're having twice the information coming in at the same time. So that's where the nerd, if you really, really want to be a nerd about the P and the I, that's what the difference is between the two of them. But for anybody who did not understand quite what I just said, then just go with something with the letter P. P is going to be perfectly fine. So let's think of P as perfect, because P will give you full HD. If you're watching things with quick movement, like sports and actions, which most of us watch anyway. So just go with P. Mostly, again, because to have the eye, the integrated, the signal actually has to be sent out that way. And most cable boxes aren't set up to actually be able to get the eye properly and put it to your TV. So just because a signal might come in as an integrated signal doesn't mean that your cable box is actually able to interpret the integrated signal and send that to your TV. So 
in all, I would just suggest go with something with the letter P in it. Just a lot easier. And we're at our last part. And this goes back to when I said in the beginning that your status light or your standby light it might be blinking if something's wrong. Again, you can find out what those mean. Um, it's usually it will be like if it blinks three times and then there's a pause and it, you know, the pause is where it is. So it's either three blinks, four blinks, five blinks, six blinks or whatever like that. I'm sorry, my glasses are falling. Um, the number of blinks will tell you which part of your TV that is not functioning properly. The main ones, again, is, is your power module. That part, if it fails, you're, it's a lot of money to replace that individual section. You need to take the whole TV apart, and the amount of money you're going to pay for that part and for the work that someone's going to put in, you may as well just buy a new TV. You can make your power module be as healthy as it can be for as long as you can by using less power on your TV. That makes sense. Don't make it work too hard. One of the things that you can do is just get outside speakers, outside sources. Now they have a lot of like sound bars and outside speakers that work with Bluetooth. That's fine. That's okay. But if you can't afford them, just do like I do. Get those cheapo speakers for computers and plug them in the analog and then just use those. There is a setting in your TV where, I mean, usually as soon as you plug something into like the headphone jack, it'll come out and speakers are fine. Like these computer speakers, I have the same set for my TV. They're about $25. They have a little subwoofer. They're great. So it takes my TV less power to give me sound because I'm not sending any power to my speakers in my TV. And well, my TV has been doing pretty good for about eight years. So that's great. Another easy thing that you can do is just put it on the darkest setting. The less that you use the lights, the longer they're going to last. Mostly. That, that's not a rule of thumb though, but it makes a little bit sense. Don't make the power block, you know. Don't make that section work too hard. It'll last longer, just like humans. If you make them work too hard, they're going to get tired and they'll stop working. The other parts that usually go are the logic boards. The logic boards there's a few different kinds. One, there's the one that just gives you your picture. So if you have the P or the I, you know, it sends out the picture. That one, sometimes things will go awry. And when it does, it's usually a capacitor. Not always, but sometimes. Because there's also some sort of, of, you know, chip in there. That sometimes will just overheat and you just need to change the chip. It's actually not that hard. Uh, it should be about like an $80 job to change that up, depending on what chip you need. It's not that hard. And after all that, there's other logic boards that do different things. And the one that I'm going to focus on, other than the one that gives you your picture, is the one that controls your HDMI inputs. Because the newest TVs now, anything that's two years old or more, doesn't have a lot of the analog things. They're not there anymore. You don't have the red, white, and blue things in the back and the yellow, all that stuff. You only have like HDMI inputs. And HDMI, again, it gives you picture and sound in the same cable. That's just what HDMI does. And there's different versions, you know, there's 2.0, 3.0, whatever. But those boards, they process a lot of information. And sometimes that board gets tired. Sometimes that's the case. So your TV is going to be acting weird. So you're going to get lines or blinking or something of the sort. But your status light might not blink. Because um, there's not something wrong with the entire board. It just might be that particular HDMI port. If you're like me and you're just using one HDMI port, like the cable in port, and you know, you have maybe a Blu-ray player plugged in but you don't use it all that often, and your TV starts kind of blinking every once in a while, just switch your usual HDMI to a different one that you've never used before, and that will usually fix the problem and give you a lot more longevity on your TV. Don't have to go get it fixed, don't have to change the whole board, just use another port. Sometimes that particular port, because it gets used all the time, kind of gets tired in the sense of, I mean, making easy words. Just use another port that you've never used before, and sometimes, most of the times, that'll fix your problem. The other logic board that may fail, and this is only in LCD TVs, again, I've seen this from, again, fixing my own TV and, and fixing TVs for people in the community. I mean, I 
don't need to make extra money and people out there don't have a lot of money. And sometimes if it's an easy fix of something like that, um, I will offer to fix their TV for free because why not, all right? But that's a whole other story for a whole other day. So in LCD TVs, you have something called a T-Con board. That means it's your timing control board. I know that me telling you that it's a timer control board doesn't mean much, but it's very complicated to explain because a timer control board involves a lot of things called gates and whatnot. And <laughs> you really need, I mean, you don't need to know that as a consumer. You just need to know that there's something called a T-Con board and an LCD TV. And when that one goes, that's when you have the lines across your TV or you'll have a big black block. Um, so if you turn your TV on and you're having difficulties that there's lines across those black lines or you know half the picture's gone because it's black, most probably it is your T-Con board that is not working very well. And again, those aren't very expensive to swap out as in time-wise. It's pretty easy to get to them, access them, and switch them out. But the part itself may be expensive depending on the brand and how old your TV is and all that whatnot. Now, to wrap up everything I just said, there's a difference between an LED and an LCD TV only because of what lights the background. They both have the same kind of screen, which is an LCD screen, a liquid crystal display screen, and LED TV has LEDs, light emitting diodes, as a light source in the back, and an LCD TV has fluorescent bulbs in the back that light it from the back. It's pretty much a difference. Sometimes you'll have something with letters called P and I. To make things easier, if you see a P on there, you're fine. It's great for action. It's great for big movements. Sorry. Just go with the P that's on there. If you see an I, think about it a little bit because I is, again, integrated and it's not very good if you want to watch sports or action scenes, something with a lot of very quick movements. If that's what you're looking for, stick with something with the letter P. If you're getting difficulties with the screen, you're getting lines across, something's blinking or what may be, check your status light if it's blinking. Again, the blink has a code. It has a pattern. You can Google what the patterns mean in order to know which part isn't working correctly. Again, a little trick, just switch your HDMI that you mainly use to an HDMI port that you have never used before. Sometimes, in an easy way of explaining this, those HDMI ports get tired of working if you're always using that particular one. And if you switch it to another one that you've never used before, well, it's not tired. It's got a lot of energy. It's going to work fine. Sometimes that's just the easy fix. Don't need to spend any money. You just use another one. Um, are they going to tell you that? No, because they want to make money fixing your TV. But I'm going to tell you because I like to save money. And then sometimes you will have something called your T-Con board, which is your timer control board. Basically, if there's big black lines across your TV screen and you have an LCD TV, your problem is your T-Con board. And uh, you know what that means. So if you bring it to get fixed and they try to tell you all sorts of other stuff, well, go somewhere else. Um, no, I wouldn't say that. But if you bring your TV to a repair shop and you say, there's something wrong with my T-Con board, they're going to assume that you know what you're talking about and will probably not try to sell you on a bunch of stuff that you don't need. And you, there's always going to be someone out there that wants to take advantage of people. It's a thing. But I'm hoping that I gave you enough, a little bit of information that if there is something wrong with your TV, you'll have enough knowledge to just say the few key words and that will tell the person who fixes the TVs that you might not be as dumb as he thinks you are and they might not try to overcharge you or what the case may be. With that, I want to thank every single one of you for tuning in. Again, you can subscribe if you want. If you don't, that's cool. Check out all the other stuff that I have. If you have any questions regarding your TV functions or anything like that, don't hesitate to ask. I will try my best to answer them. I am kind of a professional, actually when it comes to this subject. Even though I wear rings and usually do makeup, I still have that knowledge in the back of my head somewhere. Um, I don't know everything in the world, but I am at least able to help you find the proper websites in order to explain what's going on. So again, that you don't get scammed if you try to get your TV fixed. 
it was fun to talk about something different for once and to go back to what I love because I enjoyed my time in college. I really loved it when I was working on that stuff. And again, I do that as a hobby now. And um, why not share this little bit of information? Because the world of TVs is starting to get complicated and they're starting to get very expensive. And I understand that not everybody's rich. Most of us aren't. Most of us can't afford that kind of money. And we want to make our investments last as long as we can. So thanks. And you guys have yourself a great rest of the week.